My name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. In this short video, we'll provide instructions for completing the safety systems inspection from Appendix B of IIAR Standard 6. The checklists contained in IIAR 6 Appendix B are derived from a legacy document named IIAR Bulletin 109. For years, the Bulletin 109 checklists, or B109s, served as the gold standard for documenting annual mechanical integrity inspections for ammonia refrigeration equipment. In 2019, IIAR retired Bulletin 109 when the first edition of Standard 6 was published. Standard 6 addresses the minimum requirements for inspection, testing, and maintenance of ammonia refrigeration systems and includes slightly altered versions of the B109s in Appendix B. The simplest part of completing the safety systems checklist is filling out the contact information. Each IIAR6 checklist requires the inspector to indicate the location, owner, and physical address of the system. The contact's name and phone number should be the facility representative responsible for ensuring the inspection is completed. Additionally, the inspector must write his or her own name and the date of the inspection. The ID or tag number belongs in the upper right corner. Safety systems typically do not have a single unique ID or tag number, so NA is often indicated here. After completing the contact information section, the form has a section for ammonia detector data. The inspector should use this section to fill in the relevant ammonia detector information. This detector is a Honeywell Analytics model VL-LPA electrochemical vent line sensor that is interlocked with the computer control system to alarm at 1000 ppm and initiate a shutdown at 7500 ppm. So the appropriate information would be included on the checklist. The same information should be filled out for each sensor that is part of the ammonia detection system. Multiple pages can be used if necessary. The last section to complete before beginning the inspection checklist is entitled Machinery Room Ventilation System. The inspector must record the nameplate and airflow data for the fans that make up the machinery room ventilation system. This emergency ventilation fan nameplate contains most of the information required on the form. The manufacturer literature was referenced to determine that the fan blades are aluminum. The second, third, and fourth pages of the checklist contain 35 questions that should be answered yes, no, or not applicable. The wording of each question is such that a yes answer is always positive and a no answer indicates a deficiency. Some questions may not be applicable and should be answered NA. Item A asks if the equipment is labeled and has a legible nameplate. A proper label consists of the component name and ID number. Since this label only has an ID number, it should be recommended that it be relabeled Emergency Ventilation Fan 17. Items B and C ask if the safety system's equipment is suitable for ammonia and operating within limits. Suitability for ammonia can be verified by the equipment specifications provided by the manufacturer. For safety systems, the most relevant operating limit is the ammonia concentration which can be monitored at the PLC HMI. Item D requires the inspector to verify that supports and anchorage are adequate. This fan is installed on a properly designed roof curb. The safety system should have safe access for normal service and maintenance. Ideally, permanent ladders, catwalks, or other means of access to the equipment will be available. Some detectors are located at the ceiling and may require an extension ladder or aerial lift to access. Checklist item F is specific to leaks and other equipment deficiencies. The inspector must do a visual inspection of the system to verify the equipment is free from any abnormal vibration, sounds, or leaks. Items G and H ask about the exhaust airflow rate. Item G inquires about the continuous mechanical exhaust, whereas item H addresses the emergency airflow rate. To answer these questions, the facility must provide ventilation system calculations so that the inspector can assess the adequacy of the fans that are installed. The calculations demonstrate that the ventilation provided during occupancy is lower than required, so that should be indicated on item G. The emergency airflow rate exceeds 30 air changes per hour, so item H should be marked yes. Item I asks if the facility has a sail switch or other positive means to activate a supervised alarm when airflow through an emergency exhaust fan stops. 
This question requires the inspector to determine if the ventilation system is interlocked with an alarm system to notify a monitored location if the ventilation system fails. The facility did not have this interlock in place, so the question should be marked no and a recommendation made. Item J asks if the alarm functions properly when an emergency exhaust fan fails to run. This should be marked no, since no such alarm is installed. Item K asks if the ammonia detectors have been calibrated per the manufacturer's recommendation. To know if the detectors have been calibrated at a proper frequency, you will need to access the facility's inspection, testing, and maintenance documentation. Checklist item L requires the inspector to determine if the ammonia detectors are interlocked with the machinery room ventilation system and other supervised alarms. This was successfully verified and marked yes. Item M asks if all of the ammonia detectors, control circuits, emergency exhaust fans, dampers, alarms, and audio-visual enunciators function properly when detectors are bump tested with an ammonia sample. Additionally, subpoint A requests that the ammonia concentration levels be listed. Ideally, the facility will have a functional description of the ammonia detection system listing all set points. The set points can also be verified at the PLC HMI. Item N asks if the audio enunciators produce alarm output levels of 5 decibels above the maximum sound level. These ammonia alarms provide a sound level well exceeding this requirement. Checklist item O asks if the refrigeration system shuts down automatically when a detector's upper detection limit of 40,000 ppm is reached. The PLC HMI indicates that the shutdown set point is 15,000 ppm. Item P asks if the refrigerant compressors, pumps, and normally closed automatic valves can be manually shut down with an emergency stop switch from outside the machinery room. The emergency stop switch at this facility is properly labeled and is located within a tamper-resistant enclosure so that the stop switch cannot be activated by unauthorized personnel. Item Q pertains to the belts, sheaves, couplings, bearings, dampers, and filters associated with the ventilation system equipment. It is important to check that all rotating components are properly guarded to protect employees from injury. Item R asks if heat is installed and operating in the machinery room for heat loss and continuous ventilation load. Since this machinery room is located in a moderate California climate, no additional heat load is required and the question can be answered NA. Item S asks if the exhaust fan discharges are located away from doors, windows, and air intakes. This fan satisfies this requirement. Items T and U both pertain to the intake louvers. Item T asks if the intake dampers are fail open type. Item U asks if the intake louvers and exhaust fans are located to promote mixing and to avoid short circulating room air. The facility opted to do a ventilation smoke test to confirm the ventilation system was functioning well. Emergency exhaust fans must be able to be manually started from outside the machinery room per item V. This switch next to the door provides that capability. Checklist item W asks if emergency safety system signage is in place per the ANSI IIAR2 edition at the time of installation. The signage at this facility is exceptional. Item X asks if the computer control system functions properly and is free of excessive alarms. A computer control system HMI is located in the maintenance office and is visible to maintenance personnel on a big screen TV. Item Y asks if the shower and eyewash basins are installed both inside and outside the machinery room. The inspector must verify that they are functional. Checklist item Z asks if ammonia respirators, air packs, and other approved emergency equipment is available in conspicuous, easily accessible locations outside the machinery room. This is a non-responding facility that relies on local first responders for emergency response situations, so this question should be answered N.A. Item AA asks if all vessels connected directly to compressor suction are equipped with high-level float switches that sound an alarm and cut out compressors at high liquid levels. This high-temperature recirculator has a high-level float switch that was successfully tested. 
Item BB is a general inquiry about the functionality of all safety system cutouts. The inspector will likely need to review safety test documentation to answer this question. Item CC asks if the main shutoff valves, such as the King liquid, hot gas, and pumped liquid, are prominently identified with signs. This kink valve is clearly identified. Since the e-stop is interlocked with the kink valve, checklist item DD can be marked yes since activating the e-stop will de-energize the kink valve. An evacuation map or plan must be displayed near the system per item EE. Item FF inquires about emergency instructions and phone numbers that must be called during a release. This sign on the principal entrance to the machinery room exemplifies this. Checklist item GG asks if in the event of a leak, can personnel exit quickly and safely? This machinery room is well designed and free from obstructions near the room exits. Checklist item HH asks if the equipment and piping is free of pitting and surface damage. Additionally, subsection A asks if pitting or surface damage has occurred to then note the damage level by checking the boxes entitled slight or extensive. The final checklist item II serves as a catch-all for other concerns that the inspector may have observed. The area below can be used to write a description of the deficiencies. This concludes the IIAR6 Appendix B Annual Inspection Checklist for Safety Systems. I trust you found this information useful. We have more videos on our channel about ammonia refrigeration and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.